here, and I'm standing in front of the Super Animal Fitness Center. Let's go inside. So I'm here with Pamela the pig. So Pamela, what makes you different from your ancestors? Well, selective breeding has improved my genetics, such that I can deposit more lean protein than in the past. And so what management techniques have allowed you to maximize growth like this? Advances in swine nutrition and introducing growth-promoting agents into the feed allow me to maximize my lean growth. This way, I have a lot more meat at slaughter. Alright, well you look pretty busy here formulating your diet, so I guess I'll see you on my plate later. So I'm here now with Miss Little, and I just have one question to ask before we start. Are those things real? <laughs> yes, they are. My large breast muscle is a result of selective breeding. Just look how it's increased over the years. My large breast muscle has shifted my center of balance forward, making it difficult to walk. My friend the turkey has such large breast muscle that he can no longer even mate naturally. Okay, that's a little bit too personal. Um, do you mind if I come back in a couple weeks to interview you again? Unfortunately, the time from hatch to slaughter has decreased significantly over the years due to accelerated growth. I'm actually going for processing now. Nice jugs. Oh, thanks. I've been working on them all day. I'm here now with Annabelle, the Holstein dairy cow. So Annabelle, tell me, how has production changed? Well, in the 1940s, my ancestors would be able to produce maybe like 2,000 liters of milk per year, whereas now I can produce 9,000 liters of milk per year. Wow, so with all that increased production, have there been any side effects? Well, during my peak lactation, I find it difficult to maintain my body condition score. Um, other problems include acidosis, reduced reproductive efficiency, milk fever, and a displaced abomasum. All right, well, thank you very much. I'm here with Stanley now. You sure have big muscles. Well, thank you. Improved genetics and crossbreeding mean that I can grow much more efficiently than my ancestors. But if you think these are impressive, you should see my cousin. She's a Belgian blue. She has a gene deletion that inhibits myostatin production and allows her muscles to grow unregulated. And usually she can't calve without using a C-section because of the size of the calf. Oh, well that's very interesting. Thank you for your time. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go uh, that way now. I'm going into a press conference now with Priscilla Poddingsworth, a super animal specialist. And that concludes my presentation on super animals. Does anyone have any questions? What is the biggest challenge facing super animals? Narrowing genome and huge production demands put large stresses on our super animals. From this problem, if a disease outbreak occurs, it can easily wipe out an entire population of animals. Why is it important that we're preserving past genetics if it's so inferior to today's? It is important to preserve past genetics in order to reintroduce traits that will allow animals to overcome problems that they may face in the future. What is the future of our super animals? Continuing research and better management will allow our animals to improve. If we can no longer improve the quantity of production, we can continue to improve the quality of our products. In conclusion, Super animals will continue to get more super.